Hello everyone, welcome again to our machine learning career track here at Code Hiroko. My name is Mihir Thakkar and I am the founder and instructor at Code Hiroko. In our today's class, we will be building a movie recommendation system using an approach called as collaborative filtering. If you would like to get started with machine learning for free, we have a complete machine learning career track for you on our website which includes several free videos, projects, assignments and live doubt solving sessions. I'll put the link in description for you. So let's dive into our today's class. We'll start off with understanding what recommendation systems really are and study some of its popular types. Then we'll move on to collaborative filtering based approach and we'll do an example to give you some intuition behind how collaborative filtering works. And if you have seen any of our past sessions and videos, you will know that we don't just want to talk theory, but at the end of the day, I want you to be able to build these things by yourself. So we'll also go over a hands-on exercise and implement this recommendation system in Python. And at last, we'll also discuss some of the issues and challenges that you might come across if you put your recommendation system to production. Okay, so let's get started now. So the job of any recommender system is quite simple. It is to suggest a user items that are most relevant to him or her. So whether you're trying to buy books online or watch movies or read news online, there is a recommender system operating in background that is looking at your behavior and suggesting items that you are most likely to engage with. So all the major platforms that we use today use recommendation systems to improve the user experience and also suggest things that they are most likely to engage with. And to give you a sense of how valuable these recommendation systems are, in 2009 Netflix had held a competition where they gave out a prize money of $1 million for only 10% improvement in their existing recommendation algorithm. All those sources suggest that they never got it to production, but the concepts and techniques that were developed during this competition are still considered to be biggest leaps in this field. The recommendation systems as we know today are usually divided into two categories. The first one is the content based recommendation systems and these rely on the features and the attributes of the item itself. So for example, if you would want to recommend movies to a user, what you could do is look movies that they have liked in the past and find similar movies based on the director of the movie, the actors which were there in the movie, uh, the tags or the attributes that the critics have given it, the genre, the category and so on. And the second approach that we are going to study today is called the collaborative filtering approach which relies on the behavior and the information of other users that have rated, watched or bought these items before. So for example in a movie recommendation engine we could use ratings provided by other users. In our previous classes we have already covered the content based recommendation systems and I highly encourage you to go and look at that video if you haven't already seen it. I'll put the link in the description below. And today I want to focus on the collaborative filtering approach. So let me give you some intuition behind how collaborative filtering approach works and then we can start playing with it in our Python scripts. So let's say we are given this set of ratings from the past and our goal is to recommend movies to this user 3. So how do we go about solving this problem? Well, the first approach that we can take is let's look at these ratings and try to find other users that have shown similar behavior to our user 3. So in this case, let's try to find a user which looks most similar to the user 3. Alright, so let's look at movie 1. We see that user 3 likes it and seems like user 1 likes it as well. Whereas user 2 surely doesn't like it. And for movie 3, you could see that both user 1 and user 3 don't like it, whereas user 2 seems to like it. So it is obvious that user 1 is most similar to the user 3. Now that we know this, let's find other movies that user 1 likes, but user 3 hasn't watched it. So it looks like movie 5 is the one which user 1 has liked it and now we can recommend this movie to user 3 as well. So this first approach where we are trying to find similar users and then recommending movies that they like is called user to user collaborative filtering. The other approach that you could think about is let's look at the movie that user 3 likes 
and now directly find movies that are similar to it based on the ratings given by the other users. In this case, we know that user 3 likes movie 1. So let's try to find similar movies for movie 1. And again, we see that movie 5 is the one where other users have also rated it similarly. So this approach where we are finding similar items based on the items itself is called as an item to item collaborative filtering. In practice, what we know is item to item collaborative filtering works generally much better than the user to user method. And the reason for this is generally you would see that there are a lot more users in a system than the number of products or categories in that system. Also user preferences are dynamic and something that you might like in your early teens, you might not like it growing older. Whereas in an item to item method, the item stays the same irrespective of the time, right? A horror movie is still the horror movie after 10 years. Okay, so let's do a simple quiz to make sure that you get this. So based on the ratings that are given, can you recommend movies to user 4? Alright, so if you got it correct, and by using user to user collaborative filtering, what we'll see is user 2 is the most similar user to our user 4 and because user 2 likes movie 6 I think we should recommend movie 6 to user 4 as well. Feel free to try out the item to item based approach and drop in your answers in the comments. So this is good but how do we do this for hundreds of thousands of such items? We can't just eye it, we need to quantify the measure. Well it turns out that you already seen this in your high school math, let me remind you how. Let's say we try to plot these observations on a graph the ratings from a user on x-axis and user 2 on y-axis over here. Let's say user 1 doesn't like movie 1 and user 2 likes it. So we get a point on this graph somewhere over here. So similarly for movie 2, user 1 likes it so it has a high value on x-axis whereas user 2 doesn't like it so it has a lower value on y-axis. So in this 2D space we have converted our ratings into vectors that we can actually measure distances from. So one way to measure the distance between these two points would be just take what we know as the Euclidean distance and if you know Pythagoras theorem you should be able to find that distance right. But should we use it? Let's look at another case where the users have a similar taste. So this is the movie that both the users don't like and this is the movie that both the users seems to like. And in this case it looks like Euclidean distance is still large. But how about if we look at the angular distance between these two points. Yeah, that seems correct. Seems like we should be using angular distances rather than the Euclidean distance in this space. So applying some trigonometric methods over here, you can always come up with this angular distance theta. In practice, we just calculate cosine of theta, which will give us an indication of how far apart these two points are. Another approach is to use something called as Pearson correlation which is a modified version of cosine distance but adjusted to subtract the means. And we will see how to use this in our code. Alright, so let's see how do we go about implementing the collaborative filtering approach in Python. I will be using a free cloud based service called Azure Notebooks and if you use it, you don't have to install anything on your computer as well. But if you already have packages like Pandas, Scikit-learn, Jupyter, Notebook, feel free to do it locally on your computer as well. The links to all data sets and the code that we are going to use today is given in the video description. So uh, please do check it. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's go to notebooks.azure.com and sign in over there. If you don't have a Microsoft account already, you can create one for free over here. Once you are signed in, let's click on the My Projects option in the top menu. This page will list all the projects that you have created in past. Let's just create a new project by clicking the plus or the add button over here. Let's give it some meaningful name and also let's make it public because we don't have any top secret information over here and hit create. Next let's create a Jupyter notebook in this project and I will talk about what a Jupyter notebook is in few seconds. Give your notebook a name. Select the latest version of Python 3.6 and hit create. And once you are done, click on the file that will open up a new tab. 
So what we see over here is called a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm just going to give other folks a quick tutorial who haven't used this notebooks before. So instead of writing our scripts in a text editor or a IDE, what data scientists love doing is using a notebook because it allows us to add interactivity and make easier for us to share our work with others as well. Let me show you how you can write your code over here. So each gray shaded area over here is called as a cell and you can write a code over here and then run the code by either clicking this run button over here or using shift plus enter. Even control or command plus enter should work. If something doesn't feel right and you think something weird is going on, I would suggest that you click on this restart your notebook option. This will restart your kernel and run everything from top to bottom. Besides code, we can also add markdown scripts to our notebook. We can also add headers like this or images to make our notebooks more informative. Okay, so that was Jupyter Notebook 101. Let's get back to implementing collaborative filtering. So I created a dummy data set over here for movie recommendation for us to start with. So first, I want you to go back to the previous tab on, of our project and upload the toy underscore data set that I have for you. As mentioned before, you'll see all the data sets in the video description. Right, so first let's go ahead and import the necessary packages that we are going to use. Right, so once we have uploaded our data set to our project folder, let's import it in our code using pandas. So let's say ratings is equal to td.read underscore csv, the toy data set dot csv and let's uh, print it out and see what do we have. Alright, so it seems like we have the users over here in the rows and in the columns we have the movies and we have six movies over there, action 1, action 2, action 3, romantic 1, romantic 2 and 3 and 5 users. There seems something wrong with the index over here as well. So let me just go ahead and set the index as the first column of my data set. Okay, so now this looks good. And over there we see that we have a lot of NAN values as well. In most real world systems, a user might not rate everything which is present. So let's find a way to get rid of these NAN values. So what I'm going to do is replace all these NAN values with a zero. And you might think that this is not logically correct because if a user doesn't rate a movie, that doesn't mean that they have given a zero star rating to it. So let's address this issue. What we'll do is create a method over here which will standardize the ratings which are given by all the users. So let's create a method called standardize and this standardize method will take each row of our data frame as input and then convert it such that the new ratings will be the original rating minus the mean of all the ratings and then we'll divide it by the range of the ratings that the user gives. So if you notice what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to bring the mean of all the ratings that a user gives to zero and the other thing that we are doing is also dividing it by the range of the ratings that the user gives. So this will correct for any users that are too harsh or they are too lenient. So for the sake of simplicity, let's say there is a user which who has given three ratings, one, five and zero. The average rating, the mean will be five plus one, six divided by three, which will give us two. And if we subtract two from each of these values, we'll get minus one, minus two and three. So in this new data set that we have come, the mean is now zero, right? Because if you add these numbers up and divide it by three, it will give you a mean of zero. And also if we divide all these numbers by the range of values, what we'll see is to have a mean of zero and range of one. So let's go ahead and apply this 
method to our data frame so i'm going to say rating standardize is ratings dot apply the standardized method let's run this and let's print it out okay so looks like we have standardized our ratings over here so the most important task that we have now left with us is actually finding the similarity between the movies and we'll be using an item to item collaborative filtering in this example but feel free to try out a user to user based approach as well so i'm going to say item similarity is equal to so as we already saw in our theory section that we'll be using angular distances between the ratings over here so scikit-learn provides an implementation of cosine similarity we already imported the cosine method over there so let's say item similarity is equal to cosine similarity between the standardized ratings so it is ratings uh, cosine similarity of the standardized ratings the cosine similarity method over here will calculate the similarity row wise and in the rows i have the users over there i actually want the similarity to be calculated on the items so i'm going to transpose this matrix over there so if you are doing a user to user collaborative filtering you don't need the transpose but i am doing an item to item collaborative filtering and that's why i'll transpose this matrix all right so let's go ahead and print it out it seems like we have created our similarity matrix and this is going to be a model based on which we'll give recommendations to the new users the last thing that i want to do over here before we start making recommendations create a data frame out of it so right now this is in the form of a numpy array and for the purpose of convenience i'm going to convert it to a data frame so that i can use it more easily when i go about making recommendations So what I'm telling my pandas data frame to do is create a data frame from this numpy array which is item similarity and in the rate index over there I'm saying ratings dot column in the ratings dot column I have the movies right so all my rows and the columns I want the movies over there and that's why I'm saying index equals to ratings dot columns and columns are also ratings dot columns the way you should go about reading this is the first movie over there action 1 is similar to action 1 itself by 100% right so action 1 is similar to action 2 by 70% which seems logical if it's an action movie and it is even more similar to action 3 it looks like it is 80% similar to action 3 and of course action 1 is it is obviously not similar to either romantic 1 2 or 3 okay so this is how you should go about reading this entire matrix and from the numbers that we have received it seems correct all right so the final part over here is to actually make the recommendations to the user based on the model that we have created so let me just first create a method called get similar movies this method will take in a movie name and the rating that the user has given from the movies that he must have watched he or she has watched in the past and this method will return a similarity score for all the movies that are similar to this particular movie so i'm going to say similar score is equal to we'll use the data frame the item similarity data frame that we just created let's index into it let's first get this particular movie that the user has already seen so if the user has watched action 1 we now have the first row of this data frame and we are going to also scale it by the rating that the user has given for that particular movie so if i if the user gives a rating of 5 to this movie all of the values in our data frame will be multiplied by a factor of 5 now once i have got the row from this data frame i want to now arrange in descending order so what i'm going to say is similar scores is equal to similar score dot sort values dot sort underscore values and i'm going to say ascending equals to false because i want it in because i want all these scores in a descending order 
So let's test this method out and see if it really works. So I'm going to say print get similar movies and let's just pass in. Let's say if the user has watched action one over here and let's say they have given it a rating of five. So let's see what is getting returned. Now we see that the movies that are returned are action one because action one is most similar to itself and it has they have given a rating of five and that's why we have action one as five over there. So now this is good for a movie that the user really likes. So let's say if this user doesn't like romantic movies and they gave it a rating of let's say romantic three and they gave a rating of one. So the user doesn't like romantic movies so they have given a rating of just one to it. But just because of the fact that the user has rated this particular movie what is happening is other romantic movies are getting to the top okay so this is not what we want if a user has rated a movie as bad we want all other similar movies to do, to go down in the list so what i'm going to do is actually do a trick over here and subtract this user rating that the user is given by the mean over here which is 2.5 so if the ratings are below 3, it will push all those towards even more negative side. Only if the ratings are positive, which is 3, 4 or 5, it will keep them on the top of the list. Okay, so now let's see if we have done that adjustment, what is happening. Right, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna print it out again. And as you see now, because the user has given a bad rating to a romantic movie, all other romantic movies have been pushed down in the list and the action movies have popped up on the top which is something that you would expect all right so we have done it for one movie but what if the user has rated several movies so let's write our code such that it can take multiple movies that the user has rated so first let's create a fake user let's say if this is a fake user called action lover and they have rated these movies with these values. So I've created a list of tuples over here with the first element over here is the name of the movie and the second element over here is the rating that they gave it to that particular movie, okay? So now I'll create an empty data frame to collect all the similar movies that I can suggest to this user. Then let's go over this action lover list and I'm gonna say for a movie comma rating in action lover I want to get similar movies for it I want to say similar movies is equal to similar movies dot append get similar movies and instead of having our name of name and the rating hard coded over here we are gonna pass the name of the variables that we have inside our for loop okay simple Okay, so let's print out what did we get in this new similar movies data frame. So I'm going to say similar movies dot head. So again over here, uh, the indexes are not correct. So what I'm going to say instead of just directly appending, I'm going to say uh, ignore index over here. That will make sure that our indexes are not automatically created. Okay, so this seems correct. So what I'm seeing is... Uh, each row over here is for each movie that the user has rated and the values in each column over there are the similarity scores for that particular movie. So the way I'm gonna read it is because the because the user has rated action 1 over here so the highest similarity score is for action 1 and then action 3 and then action 2. So now seems like everything is coming together the only thing that we have to do is now so based on the, the three observations or the three rows that we have, let's just sum up, let's just sum them up in just one row and let's suggest the movies to this user. So I'm going to say similar movies dot sum. Now this will sum all the values row wise. And then we'll sort them in descending order. So as you see, uh, action one is right on the top. Even though when we go about implementing the actual system, you don't want to uh, suggest the same movie as the user likes but this is the intended behavior from the system right now and then action 2 and 3 
comes to the top because the user has liked action 1 and all the other romantic movies are down the list. So it seems like our algorithm is working good for the toy data set that we created but does it even work on a real world data set? We are going to try it out. So what I have provided you in this data set folder are also other two files which are called movie.csv and ratings.csv. This is from a famous data set called movie lens. Now let's go ahead and use the ratings to see if our algorithm that we have done works on real world movie data set. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new notebook now. I'm going to say movie lens collaborative filtering. Uh, so as always, let's load the necessary packages first. So I'm going to say import pandas as pd. Then also let's read the two CSV files, the ratings.csv and the movies.csv file that have been given to us. Now instead of having them in two separate data frames, I'm going to merge them to create a single data frame called ratings and I'm going to use the merge method from data frame to do that. So it seems like we have merged the data frame successfully and we have several columns over here. The first one is the ID of the movie, the title, the genre, the user ID who rated this particular movie, the ratings that they give and the timestamp when this was created. So a lot of valuable information over there. But in our collaborative filtering approach, we are just interested in the users and the ratings that they gave to a particular movie. Right, so I'm going to drop a few columns over here. I'm going to drop the genre and the timestamp. Again, you could use these columns to make much more better recommendations. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the user ratings. Okay, so this is a much concise version of the data frame that we are trying to work with. Okay, so this is good, but it is still not similar to the kind of data frame that we had created before. So how do we create a data frame similar to the toy data set that we have? So let's create a, so what we could do is use the pivot method in pandas and we're going to pivot on this data set. This is similar to the pivot in Excel if you have used it before. So in the rows, we need the data frame of the user ID, the user who rated it. And in the columns, we have the movie that they rated. And in the values for each column, we want the ratings that the user gave that particular movie. And this is what we were expecting. As I said, in the rows, we have the user IDs. In the columns, we have the title who, which they rated. And the value of that cell will be the ratings that were given. And you are seeing that there are a lot of NAN values as you would expect in any real world data set because a user won't be able to rate these much of movies. So as you see over here from the shape of this data frame, you see that we have about 9,719 columns or we have 9,719 movies. And of course we are just printing only the first five rows, but even then we don't have that much of users. I think we have about only 600 users in our data frame. So we'll have to make a decision over here. I think we would want to drop, I think we should drop a few movies from our data frame where we don't have that many users who have rated them because if we have a movie which only one or two users have rated it no that might just create noise in our system so over here i'm going to drop all the movies that have less than 10 users who have rated it we'll drop all the columns where we have less than 10 values which are not nans and again we wanted to do on columns and that's why we are going to say access as one over here. And then we'll fill all the NAs with zeros just like we did before. Just like we did with our toy data set. 
let's print it out and see what do we get okay so we see that some movies have gone away and the rest of the nands have been filled with zeros there are some values with are non zeros as well and as you see uh, we are left with about 2200 movies which is still not bad and feel free to adjust this threshold over here if you would want more movies in your data set you could keep the threshold as low so while we were doing the theory we i told you that we had two options either we could do the cosine similarity or we could do the pearson correlation so this time instead i'm going to use the inbuilt method of a data frame which is called correlation over here to get the pearson correlation between our movies so i'm going to say item similarity data frame is equal to user ratings dot correlation we want the correlation method as pearson and because the pearson correlation actually behind the scenes it will adjust for the means we don't have to apply our standardized method over here and if i print it out now we see that we have our model created the similarity matrix that we just created that we had created before we have this created over here as well so let's go ahead and take the methods that we have already written in our first program and paste it in this notebook as well so i'm going to take the get similar so i'm going to take the get similar movies method let's copy paste it over here so let's take the testing code over here that we used to test how well our recommendation system was working Now instead of action 1, romantic 2, 3, what I'm going to do is put the names of these actual movies over here. So I'm going to just go on the top and copy paste a few names of action movies that this user might like. Right, so let's take the Too Fast, Too Furious, maybe 12 Years of Slavery as well. And 500 Days of Summer is a romantic movie. So I'm going to give it a low rating over there. And now let's run this and see if the recommendations that we are getting make sense. All right, great. So seems like we are getting some good results over here. The first two results are from the movies that we have already seen. So let's ignore it. But the third recommendation over here, as you see, is Fast and the Furious 2001, which our system is suggesting the, that the user should look at the other two as well right which makes sense and then again the remaining all the other action movies come right on the top over there so that was it for the implementation part so some of the things that i would have loved to do in this uh, hands-on session over here would be to uh, separate it into the training and test data set so that we could also do measures like mean squared error but that would be something for another class let me also go over some of the issues and challenges that you might face when you uh, when you build a real world recommendation system so especially with collaborative filtering one of the biggest challenges is how do you handle unknown users or new items that they come in in your system so this is also called as the cold start problem because if you don't have much information about the user how do you suggest the movies right so in real world what uh, most companies would do is combine your collaborative filtering with a content based recommendation system to create a hybrid recommendation system and that's how you they would handle this challenge next is also data sparsity as i said if you don't have much information about the users how do you uh, how do you suggest them movies that are that make sense to them and also the scalability aspect to it uh, when you were running the correlation method or the cosine distance method you would see that even for our no small data set of about few megabytes or even less uh, we were taking you no know, at least a few seconds for that uh, method to run now imagine running this with you no know, several gigabytes of data uh, scalability is a big challenge when you are dealing with collaborative filtering methods as the number of users and item increase our performance would slow down our system would slow down considerably and last uh, now how do you handle dynamic updates to your system let's say we have already built this model now if we want to add new items we have to rebuild this now if that is compute expensive or time expensive 
Now, a lot of times it might be a big challenge. So take an example of Google News. A new news article might come out by every second. Do you want to rebuild your model? Or do you do partial rebuilds? Or do you do uh, batch rebuilds? So all those things are a big challenge when you talk about recommendation systems. All right, guys, so that's it for today's class. Let me know in the comments if you like it and want to see a lot more of such videos. We also have a class WhatsApp group. So if you would like to be a part of that WhatsApp group, please go ahead and message me on the number given in the description and I'll add you to that WhatsApp group. I'll see you next time with another interesting project. Till then, goodbye.